Well, our next guest hasn't had a shower for five years. Dr James Hamlin stopped using soap, shampoo and conditioner for half a decade and he reckons you should join him if you want to live a healthier life. Yeah, Dr James joins us now in New York this morning. Well, look, you look very well scrubbed up there, James. Have, have you had a shower this morning? How, what, is, what is the aroma there right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it smells fine. Uh, I haven't had any complaints. Okay. Uh, no, I didn't have a shower this morning. And you're actually catching me uh, just outside the city. And I did go water skiing today. So that might have been a bit of a cheat. Okay. okay, right. Okay, so you got a bit of salt water working through you there. Uh, why did you stop showering and using soap? What what was the uh, the catalyst for that? Uh, well, it's a, it was kind of a long journey, uh, and and I detail it in this in this book that I wrote uh, called Clean. But basically, I was doing o overall a lot of minimizing in my life, and at the same time, I started learning about the skin microbiome. So so just like the gut microbiome that we have trillions of microbes living inside us. We also have them living all over our skin. And that led me to do some experimentation with um, trying to see exactly, you know, what was what was the point of a lot of the hygiene and uh, skin care and uh, cleanliness regimens that we're doing if in fact we are always covered in, in microbes all the time, most of which are are perfectly healthy and, and even beneficial to us. Well, I mean, here's the thing. So I've heard about people doing the whole I don't shower, I don't shampoo my hair mm -hmm. or use conditioner anymore. That's a quite a big thing now. But you're doing deodorant, moisturizer, soap. So are you still showering and just not using those things? Like, is there a rinse going on? And 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 if indeed, how long until the odor sort of became okay? You're almost too interested in this. <laughs> no, I am fascinated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should specify that I'm very good about hand washing, especially right now. Yeah, hand washing, go. crucial. One area where soap, we know that is beneficial to human health, that will help stop the pandemic. So on a serious note, um, you know, that's very important. Outside of that, most of what we do is recreational. It's cultural. It's because we want to look a certain way. We want to smell a certain way. And our body's gotten used to using these products. Um, so there is a lot of malleability there mm. to sort of change your habits if you want to. And again, this is a, a very individual choice and I don't want to change anyone who doesn't want to change, but the book kind of goes into how you can do less. And for me, that became, uh, now it's just a quick rinse, water only, m most mornings. Um, I, I found that, you know, I went for a while doing absolutely nothing and I found that I actually enjoy the ritual of it. I enjoy it sort of starts the day especially during the pandemic. It just sort of, you know, gets you going, uh, enters the work day. Uh, but it's, it's more about ritual. It's more about grounding. And it's not about believing that I'm a healthier or better or more virtuous person for having done okay. it. No, but you seem, you seem really fit, though. Like, if, like, when I'm finished at the gym... I don't want to be anywhere near you. No, and neither no. does my wife. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what happens then? Yeah, um, sometimes I'll rinse off after that, sometimes not. Um, you Just know, I, your body sort of gets into more of an equilibrium when you stop doing these things. Right. Uh, and, and I don't recommend that anyone do it cold turkey. You know, we've all, okay. when, when I was in the same habit as everyone of doing a lot of showering and a lot of application of soap, if I went a day without it and a day without deodorant, I mean, I knew it. I smelled terrible. I looked greasy. I felt bad. Over over time, though, if you gradually do less and less, um, your body gets used to it. It's sort of like training for a marathon and you never smell like a cool ocean breeze or whatever your body wash used to smell like. But mm -hmm. you don't um, you don't smell like, you know, rotten onions or body. Odor. <laughs> I suspect you're smelling yeah. like just pine of an clean even this morning. Steady state. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. I'm really it is fascinating. It's worth reading. Um, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're contemplating, <laughs> but please don't because it does. You know, as we've heard, yeah, okay. James says it takes a while it to the odor to neutralise. So, I didn't know I haven't started. James, we really appreciate it. It is really fascinating, and we appreciate you sharing your findings with us this morning. James's new book, Clean: The New Science of Skin, is out now. I'm fascinated by that because there'd be a lot of people who suffer from eczema or you know, like course, skin diseases yeah. and psoriasis. That may help, you mm. know, and, and then sort of coming off soap might help that. So well, Julia Roberts hasn't used deodorant for years. Mm. And, you know, and anything look at her Julia career does, now. I'll do. Oh, no, oh really? Anything Julia does, you do? I love Julia Roberts. All right, yeah. well, I'm going to write that down and remember that. Still